Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and welcome to Learning Game Development. This time we're going to take a look at scenes, what they're for and why they exist. Don't forget, click subscribe button and click on the bell icon as well to stay up to date with everything I upload to my channel on video game development. There's always loads to see, loads to learn and loads to do. Let's get on with it, shall we? So, what is a scene? Now it's something I've not really spoken about up until now. We've dealt with all of this here in something called the scene view, but what exactly is a scene? You can think of a scene in its simplest terms as a level, just something like that. So for example, each level in Crash Bandicoot would be a scene, specifically created just for that section. So this here is its own scene. And if we created a new scene, everything here would disappear and we'd be able to build something brand new. So it's always a good idea to save your scenes whenever you can. So if you go file and save as, you'll be able to save your scene. Let's save it in scenes. Where it is a sample scene, and that is the one we are in. And we'll call this, I'm just gonna call it Jimmy because why not, that's me. So that has saved now, but where has it saved? It's saved in this folder called scenes. And we can see here, there's that sample scene and there is Jimmy. Now, these are technically assets. So whenever you create a scene, it's an asset because it's something that you can modify. Now, we are currently in that scene Jimmy, but if we open up that sample scene, which was the scene because Jimmy is just a duplicate of that sample scene. Oh, no, it's not. It's because I didn't save it, that's why. So there we go. That's an even better example because I was going to delete everything in sample scene, but we can see those two scenes are completely separate objects. So we can add, uh, let's add a 3D object. Let's have a sphere. Let's have a massive sphere just because we can. There we go. And let's save that scene. So that scene has a sphere and this one has everything that we created originally. So you can use scenes to go from one section to another. So you've got to think about it in terms uh, logistically in games themselves. So let's take um, Grand Theft Auto, for example. When you load up Grand Theft Auto, you'll be presented with the Rockstar logo and then maybe a couple of other things, you know, the engine name or whatever. That is likely to be a scene that has all those logos laying on top of each other one after the other. You could then have another scene, which is the main menu. And that main menu could have, you know, some background. It could have all the fonts on there, all the buttons that you need to click to go to the game. And then when you click on new game, it takes you to, you know, the start of the game, which is another scene. So you can think of the progression throughout a game as going from scene to scene. Let's take Crash Bandicoot, for example. We start the very first level and that is scene one. When we finished it, and we've counted up all our boxes and we go to the, you know, the main world, the islands, that's another scene. And then we go to level two, that's another scene. So how does Unity know what scene is what? Well, it's all done via coding again, using scene management, but we have to tell the engine specifically what scenes are within the build. So if you remember going to file and build settings a while ago, we had something called scenes in build at the top, which I didn't even mention. So we can drag and drop our scenes into here. And you'll see each one be assigned a numeric value. So when you come around to coding within uh, your game and you want to move from one scene to another, you would be able to use that numerical unique value to move from one scene to the next. And each and every scene it can be created however you want. You can always create a brand new scene. So file, new scene. And again, you can either have it the basic built in or you can just have it an empty one. Again, this one is the default one that always comes up whenever you start Unity, but you can have it empty if you want to. Um, I believe this kind of stuff um, only appeared after Unity 2021, I think. Um, like in earlier versions of Unity, it just created the new scene for you. It didn't give you the option. Uh, but you can just create that new scene from there. And obviously, again, if you add in more objects, so let's add in a cube this time. Let's have it 200, 200, 200. Let's rotate slightly so we can see a little bit of a difference. And then save that scene as, uh, let's go into there and put it as 
QB. So then we have that other asset called QB. And we can switch between those scenes quickly and easily. So imagine that was level one, level two, uh, main menu, all those different things. And each time you create a new scene that you want to have in there, all you would need to do is just drag and drop into your scenes in build. Now it's important to always remember that um, when you're creating very in-depth games, it's always best to have a new scene whenever you can have a new scene. Obviously, with a massive open world, that would more than likely just be one single scene and you would build that massive world. Because it's unlikely that you would go from one scene to the next inside an open world because that would require some loading and it wouldn't be quite so seamless. So there are certain sections and certain points that you wouldn't need multiple scenes for. But when you're creating a game which has multiple levels, that is where a scene would be necessary. So long story short, you can think of a scene as your building level. Each one for each section. And they don't necessarily have to be levels. Like I say, there could be a credit scene. It could be a main menu. It could be an options menu. Each scene could be used for something like that. And you can just interchange between the scenes using coding and using that unique value of scene number. And again, I have all of this on my channel in various different tutorials, much more in depth than this. Again, this is all just kind of quickly covering things to get you started on that road to game development. Next time, we're going to take a quick look at some animation. Until then, thanks very much for watching, guys.